Today, we geek out about one last job. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Lee from Geek City USA here. And today we're gonna to talk about a game called One Last Job. Now this is a two player asymmetrical card game coming to Kickstarter on May 22nd. And in this game, one player takes on the role of the powers that be, and the other player takes on the role of the crew. And the, basically the crew's job is to complete some heists to gain 10 resolution points before the powers that be can score those resolutions. So we're gonna take a look over here. I'll give you a quick rundown, kind of how to play, and then I'll come back here and I'll give you my thoughts on the game. All right guys, so this is one last job. So first and foremost, this is all prototype. So as you can see here, the, the art's not final. It's just placeholder art. Um, you'll be able to see what the art will actually look like on the Kickstarter page. Um, I've seen some of it so far and it looks like it's going to be really good. Um, but so just keep in mind though that this is all prototype. So it's all subject to change with the way the layout is and everything. Uh, and definitely check out the Kickstarter page for a, a representation of what the art will actually be. This is the powers that be, and this is the crew. Here's the hideout for the powers that be. This is the back office. It's a staging area, private. Add one influence to the back office as an as a action. And you see that the Don starts here as well. He is the actor, he's the, the boss, and he has a power for one action, move one influence from the office to the scene. So as your working towards scoring these resolutions, this is the amount of influence that you have to have at a location in order to score the resolution. So as you're adding influence here, these are the influence tokens, as you're adding influence here, the Don will be able to go to locations to move the influence. And as soon as you get the amount of influence indicated in the bottom of the card here, uh, then the powers that be can score this. And in this case, this would be worth three points out of a total of 10. They get 10, they win. All right, if you look here for the crew, here's their starting area. Uh, for one action, fill one skill point on an operative or item here. So that'll allow them to fill the skill points, which will help them to break into a location. So on initial startup, you're going to create a scene and you're gonna draw from the scene deck. And you'll see here, for example, this is Something in the air ducts, it's a private scene, and some, uh, some events are going to have a different impact, whether it's private or uh, public. And then these are going to be the cards that you're adding. So in this case, you'll see there's one guard, one lock, and then two snags. So I'll set this here. Um, this will be the first scene, and we will build the scene deck. Here's one guard, one lock, and two snags. Okay, so these are gonna make up the deck initially. And then also the, uh, the person who's playing the powers is gonna draw two resolution cards. They're gonna look at them and they're gonna pick which one they want to go in that deck and then the other will go on to the bottom of the resolution deck. So in this case, these are both the same. So this will go in this deck. This will go back to the bottom here. And then you can shuffle these now, but you'll be shuffling them throughout the game. At any time, the powers that be can look at this um, to see exactly what is in that deck. All right, and this here indicates the threat level. Right now, these are all gray. As the threat increases, you'll flip these over and it'll turn to, uh, at least the way I've done it, turn to the lit up green version. And what this does is, if there is a threat, every time that the crew completes a, completes a job and is able to capture one of these resolution cards, from a location, the threat level increases. And then as an action later on, the, the powers can spend an action to use a threat level and then add a snag card into the deck of a, of a scene. And what that does is that makes it a little bit more difficult for the crew to go ahead and find the resolution card that they're looking for. These here are the, the action tokens. This just shows you that each player has five actions on their turn and this helps to keep track of that. So once you set up a scene, and you're going to uh, set up a scene every time as long as there's fewer than three. So once there's three scenes in play, you don't have to set up another one until one of these resolutions have been found. So when you start, you're gonna deal five cards to each player. One, two, three, four, five. We'll start with the Don. And if you look here at the cards, what we have, 
So events are cards that uh, essentially that happens immediately. And then you have complications, which these are kind of equivalent to traps that you play on a location. And then these are actors that you play on a location and they stay hidden as well. And these have items that go into effect. So when the crew is gonna do an operation, they'll encounter this and they can bypass it if they have that skill there. So this is the mob's hand. So for example, on this turn, um, the mob would have five actions and they would play, well, let's see, first things first, fast forward, we'll add seven influence to your office. So we're gonna play that for three actions. We'll just set that aside there with three on it. And that gives us seven influence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we will also play Jimmy for the next two points. At the start of an operation here, raise the threat level by one. Uh, we're going to put him, he's an actor unique, and it'll tell you right here, play face down at a scene. So we're going to play him face down here. And that would end the powers that be's turn. So now we'll take the crew's turn, one, two, three, four, five. And then you'll always draw, the first thing on your turn is you're gonna draw a card. So we have six cards in total here. You'll see here I have an operative and I have some events and some items. Now an operative is who's going to make the operations to try to get the resolution cards out of here. So I'm gonna play him for three. You'll see he has that capability uh, so he can beat the guard icons. And then he has an action that if he's at a location that has any influence on it or at a scene, um, for one action he can fill up as many of these guard icons as there are uh, as there is influence on the scene. So I'm gonna play him for three. So he'll go into the hideout. So one, two, three. So I have two actions left. So what I'm gonna do for the next two actions, this card here, if you look again, it says fill one skill point on operatives or items here. So I'm gonna go ahead and for my last two actions, put two of these tokens on Garland McKinnon. So now we go back to the guard's turn. Now prior to the guard's turn, you have the scene. There's only one scene, so we're going to add a second scene. So we'll draw a scene. This is Wet Towel. It's a public scene with one lock and three snags. So we'll place this here, and then we will grab one lock and three snag cards. And we will put them face down. And then we will draw two resolution cards, and we will pick one. So this one's worth four, so we'll take this one, I guess. Put this guy to the bottom of the deck and put that one there. And then we can start the, the powers turn. So we have our four cards, we'll draw at the start of our turn. Take the cannoli. And we're gonna play a complication. Uh, I'm gonna put this complication on the new scene, so this is one point, and this says, when discovered, attach to the scene, and it's a lock at the start of an operation here, stop the operation. So one of the crew would have to have that skill in order to break this operation. So we're gonna play this. That's one action, leaves me with four. And for my next action, I'm gonna move the Don into this scene right here, so that's action number two. And then I'm going to use this uh, power here that says move one influence to the, uh, from the office to the scene. So we're gonna go three, four, and five. So now he, they've used all five actions, and we now have three influence at this location. So if you look again, six influence and the, uh, the powers would have three points. Okay, now we'll come back to the crew and we'll look at the crew's hand. The crew will draw one card. And at the end of the turn, if you're ever more than five cards, you must discard one of the cards in your hand. So now I see here, this has a lock and this has a lock. And then the only uh, operative that I have only has these guard icons. So I need something with a lock. So I'm gonna play Thieves Tools here, and this is uh, three actions, but it allows me to, um, I can attach this to my operative and they could have a lock skill. So I will play this for three, and I will attach this to Garland McKinnon. And then for four, I will fill one skill point on an operative here, or item here. So that would have the lock icon. And then five, I'm going to move Garland McKinnon we're gonna to go to, see now, if I go to this location, yeah, let's, let's go here, let's move these out of the way. We're gonna go here for five. So that would end my turn, that's my fifth action. 
But now Garland McKinnon is at this location. Now, prior to the power's turn, there's only two scenes, so we're gonna add a third scene. So we'll draw a scene, and this one is, let's have a talk, it's a private scene with one, uh, one guard, one lock, and two snags. So we'll put that there, one guard, one lock, and two snags. Just put that right here, because we're running out of table space. Draw two of these cards, two resolution cards, and we'll just put this one in, just for the sake of moving this along. And then now it's the powers turn. So we will draw a card from the powers deck. And we will say, we will play this complication for one. We'll play it at this location. We have so much space with the camera, but, so that complication is here. That was one. And then for the remainder of the turn, I can go two, three, four and move one influence from the uh, from the office here that would give me six influence here and thus the powers that be would be able to score this now let's say that we finish a turn let's say for whatever reason the Don moved over to here and he played these three over here just so that way we can show what a operation looks like so now we're on the uh, the cruise turn We'll draw up a card here. We'll add Yerba Mate. And before we do anything with these cards, we are going to run an operation on this location. So basically what happens now is we are saying, okay, we're running an operation that takes one action. And the first thing that we do is we reveal this face down card and we see, okay, this is Jimmy. And at the start of an operation here, raise the threat level by one. Now, I have an option of, I can spend one of these tokens, and that would skip this from happening. So I'll set him there. However, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So we're gonna use one of these tokens, we'll discard it, to keep that from happening. Actually, that was supposed to be a lock. So we'll discard this guy. And then for the operation, we take this card, and or this deck of cards that has the locks, the guards, the snags, and the resolution. And the player who's the powers that be is going to shuffle this deck and then offer the cards at random for the, for, the, uh, for the crew to grab a card and pick one. So, okay, he's gonna pick this one and we get a guard. Okay, so what happens here is this is going to add a snag and stop the operation. So we can actually play this token to stop this from happening. And then this takes this card out of, the, out of the deck there. However, we're out of those tokens. And then the operation stops. So we're going to say, okay, we're gonna do another operation. That's turn two. We're gonna do the same thing again. And at the start of the operation here, raise the threat level by one. I don't have a way to stop this because I have no more guard icons. Because again, this requires that guard icon. So I will go ahead and I will raise the threat level by one. But then we will shuffle this deck fan it out and it's up to the, uh, to, the, to the crew to grab a card and I drew a snag, so this is pretty cool. What a snag does is you discover the complication or the top of the power stack. So there's a complication face down here, so you can discard that card, so we're gonna discover this. And what this says is, when discovered, raise the threat level by one and trash little birdie. So you will raise the threat level one more and this card is going to get trashed. So we'll go again, action three, because the odds are ever in our favor here. We will draw one as the crew, and look at that. So we've found the resolution. So the crew gets this. They now have three points towards 10, and they still have two actions. So I can actually go over to here for action four, and then I'm gonna run another operation here for action five. So we will grab this deck, we can shuffle it up, and then the crew can grab a card, and we just happen to find the resolution. Let's say we didn't, let's say we found, what else is in this deck, just snags and locks. Again, if I found a snag here, we would go ahead and flip this card, and this would happen. And this card says, uh, when discovered, attached to the scene, 
and at the start of an operation here, stop the operation. So we would have to use this lock to get past this. So I would say, okay, I'm gonna use my lock icon or my lock token. We can then continue the operation here. The snag is gone. And I would take another, run another action and go from there. And you can wash, rinse, repeat until you're out of actions. And then you go back and forth. And then basically the, the first player to get uh, 10 points, resolution points, either as the powers that be or as the crew is the winner. All right, guys, that was one last job. So first and foremost, let me remind you that that was a prototype, so the final art and final components were not there. So be sure you check out the Kickstarter page to see what that is actually going to look like. So let's talk about the gameplay. So I'm a huge fan of two-player asymmetrical card games. Uh, Android Netrunner is one of my favorite games, and I love when this is done well, how two different players can be playing the same game, yet focusing on different tasks. And when it melts together and works well, it, there's nothing better to me than a, a two-player asymmetrical game that does that. And One Last Job does that perfectly. You have the, the crew who's doing the operations and trying to sneak in and pull heists off. And you also have the powers that be who are trying to maybe trap the crew or while all the while still trying to get the resolutions. You're playing actors at different locations, different complications. And I will say that as the asymmetrical part of this game works very well. Each role that you play feels different, it feels fresh, and the game just flows well. I also find One Last Job to be very accessible. Whereas like Android Netrunner, for example, is a lot more complex. I feel like One Last Job is a is a game that can be taught easier and it's able to be uh, comprehended a lot easier. It's not quite as complex. And also the theme of the game seems to be uh, more widely accepted. I found that as I was explaining this to different people, they were overall interested in the theme of you know, the crew taking on the powers that be, pulling off a heist, it definitely, it just, it had a more accessible and more interesting vibe to a lot of the people that I played this with. I'm also very interested to see once this Kickstarter launches, there's a number of factions that are already in the works. And from the sounds of it, these are going to be very interesting. I think they're gonna add a good dynamic of gameplay that kind of differentiates from one faction to the other that helps to keep the game interesting and help offer additional replayability. As it was for what I had in my prototype, which was the crew versus the mob, it was very replayable. I've played it a number of times. It hasn't gotten old and it's been very enjoyable each time we've played it. In addition to the accessibility of this game, the gameplay time is also a plus. The game runs about 30 minutes, give or take. Some games might run a little bit longer, some might run a little bit shorter, but that 30 minute sweet spot, it, it really keeps the game flowing, it keeps the game interesting, and you don't get bogged down uh, with the game. You know, the games, they, they cruise through, there's really no downtime, and from turn to turn, there's a lot of action happening. There seem to be a lot of decisions that you can make, and it doesn't seem to slow down in, in a way some other games do. I also really like the way the scene deck works. So when you build a scene, when you add those cards with the, uh, with the guard cards and the snag cards and so on, I really like that aspect of the game because it, it makes it a bit more of a... It's deck builder-ish because as the uh, as the powers that be, you can add on additional snags uh, based on the threat level, and it's just kind of fun to watch that deck build to make it a little more complex for the crew, and yet at the same time, it's still random enough where you don't know as a crew, the very first time they run an operation, they could find that resolution and get the points. However, you don't know for sure, so there's there's a, a little element of randomness that I think is welcome in a game that would are, would otherwise be purely strategic. And I, I like that random factor because it, it kind of adds a little bit of chaos to the game, a little bit of uh, unexpectedness. So it, it kind of, there's a lot of aha moments and, and laughs and pointing at the table when you might be behind and all of a sudden you get a very good operation that totally levels the playing field. Uh, overall, I just, I, I like that piece of the game. So all in all, I highly recommend this game. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, again, I'm a fan of asymmetrical card games, and this totally, it, it knocked it out of the park for me. It was everything that I wanted in an asymmetric card game. It was accessible, it was fun, it played quick, and I think with the variety from the different factions that will be offered as a part of the Kickstarter, this is something that I myself am totally interested in checking out. This is definitely a game that I'm looking forward to.
All right, guys, that's it. This is Lee from Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. And definitely check us out on social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. And uh, just be sure to connect with us. Stop by, say hey on one of the social platforms. Love to interact with you guys. Once again, thanks for hanging out with us. My name is Lee, and we will see you next time.